Who is Kelly Leffler? Narrated by Natalie Portman. What the f meant? What is Natalie Portman doing in this video, dude? That's crazy. Okay, Natalie. Pro Trump, pro military, and pro wall. That's Kelly Leffler, an unelected incumbent Republican senator from Georgia whose shady financial maneuverings and refusal to acknowledge the actual winner of the presidential election have made headlines nationwide. As Leffler's re-election bid goes to a runoff against Democrat Raphael Warnock in January 2021, let's take a look at the career of a WNBA co-owner turned legislator on behalf of a state that did not vote for her. I'm Natalie Portman, and this is the story of Kelly Lynn Leffler. She was born in Bloomington, Illinois in 1970. Bloomington is best known as the home of State Farm Insurance or seemingly every other commercial on television, but it wouldn't take long for Leffler to dominate the airwaves herself. She attended undergrad at the University of Illinois in Champaign, where she was a member of the Alpha Gamma Delta sorority. She went on to graduate from Chicago's DePaul University with an MBA in 1999. Out of school, Leffler worked at Toyota for four years, where according to her LinkedIn, she was a district account manager. From there, she hopped to Citibank, then to William Blair, an investment banking company, and then eventually to Intercontinental Exchange, or ICE where she ended up marrying the fucking CEO! in 2002. According to the company's website, it builds, operates, and advances global markets through information, technology, and expertise, aka it owns financial and commodities exchanges, including the New York Stock Exchange. She quickly climbed the company ladder, securing a seat as a top lieutenant for the company's CEO, Jeff Sprecher. In 2004, Leffler married that CEO ah! and climbed the ladder again, ah! taking over as head of marketing shortly after. While at ICE, Leffler and Sprecher's company provided a platform for, as Mother Jones noted, highly speculative, unregulated energy trading that ended up causing an Enron-like scandal and costing residents of Georgia millions of dollars. In 2006, a giant hedge fund called Amaranth controlled up to 70% of the entire natural gas market Amaranth. on the New York Mercantile Exchange, aka NYMEX, an exchange regulated by the U.S. government. And seeing red flags around Amaranth's strategy, namely high price volatility for natural gas, NYMEX was duty-bound to step in. NYMEX told Amaranth to reduce its natural gas positions. Amaranth agreed to do so, but what they really did was just shuffle the highly speculative natural gas transactions to an electronic energy exchange owned by Leffler's firm, ICE. It just so happens that fine print in US legislation lays electronic energy exchanges outside of US government oversight. Leffler and her cronies profited off the move at the expense of working people in Georgia. The Municipal Gas Authority of Georgia calculated that its 243,000 customers paid an extra $18 million in the winter of 06 and 07. In 2013, ICE bought the New York Stock Exchange for over $8 billion. Along the way, Leffler bought a minority stake in the WNBA team, the Atlanta Dream, before becoming a full-time co-owner in 2011. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution notes why this is a particularly interesting venture for Leffler of all people. The WNBA has a history of appealing to Black and LGBTQ fans, both groups far from Trump's base. Plus, the league has a reputation for supporting progressive causes like a two- Bro just buys the stock exchange? Yeah, bro. You know, the everyday, the common man, the kind of person that you need in a position of power that will truly represent the interests of Georgia. The guy, the woman who's fucking married to the guy who's like, I'm going to buy the stock exchange. Like, come on, dude. I'm going to buy the WNBA team. Like, she was literally fucking bored. Okay. She was bored. And was like, maybe we'll get some uh, insider information that will help us with some trades. And has done nothing. Like, literally, just all she's done is that. And there is not a, there is not a better representation of someone who is like comically evil and out of touch than someone like Kelly Leffler. David Perdue too. Like, that's why I was saying, uh, something that I said about Kelly Leffler and David Perdue that got like misconstrued by people in Georgia, uh, and, and, uh, frustrated some of the fucking young Zoomers who are super woke was when I said Kelly Leffler is not like KKK racist. She's just like rich white lady racist. I'm not saying that people in KKK are fucking poor. Of course not. A lot of those uh, KKK fucks are networking and also very wealthy too. But the KKK is ideologically white supremacist. 
Kelly Loeffler is just like, you know, regular racist. But the reason why she was fucking portrayed with uh, or, or photographed accidentally with a fucking KKK member is literally because some of the Georgians are literally KKK racist. That's it. It's at the heart of the fucking Confederacy. These motherfuckers look at that and go, oh yeah, she's one of us. She's good. They're literally LARPing as like more racist than they actually are, like overtly racist so they can get votes. Kelly Luffler is very clearly the exact like swamp rat that Donald Trump claims he hates, despite the fact that he is also a swamp rat himself. 2018 initiative that allowed fans to donate a portion of ticket sales to Planned Parenthood, an abortion rights group. This doesn't go unnoticed by Leffler though. She told AJC, frankly, I think Americans have been saddened by the politicization of sports because it is something that uniquely unites people. Again, same, this is the same gamer mentality for old school gamer mentality. If you guys remember is anything is political if there's women, or if there's black people in it. And it's non-political if women and black people are in it, but they just don't advocate for women or, or uh, black people causes. You know what I mean? Oh, I just hate that sports are so political nowadays. Like, why don't you just shut the fuck up? That's what this is. That's what that take is. However, the senator from Georgia's idea of uniquely uniting people is far different. When she was eventually appointed to the Senate, Leffler, who once called the Black Lives Matter movement a very divisive organization, gave a large portion of her Senate salary to anti-LGBTQ plus and anti-abortion groups. One of the organizations she donated to groups homosexuality with bestiality and incest as forms of sexual immorality. Seems divisive. But backing up a bit, in 2018, Leffler left Intercontinental Exchange for a CEO position at an ICE subsidiary company called Bact, which according to Fortune magazine, aims at democratizing cryptocurrencies. She must have been earning a pretty penny too. She and her husband made history in Atlanta for purchasing possibly the most expensive real estate ever. In Dude, nothing says, nothing says one was Georgia, like buying the most expensive piece of real estate in Georgia so that you can uh, make a more legitimate claim that you're Georgia yourself. Like, she hasn't even, she doesn't even have the bona fides to, like, appear. Her name isn't Tommy Tuberville, you know what I mean? She's not a fucking football coach. Like, that guy, if he says some racist shit, I believe him, okay? If she says some racist shit, I believe it too. Like, you know, racist white, uh, rich white lady. Of course she's racist. But, like, but, like, she's literally trying to LARP as a... Is like a like a salt of the earth guy and it fucking works yeah exactly the country cosplay that she puts on is so nasty it's so lame she literally puts on like a fucking shooting vest and that's it and then everyone's like yeah she's a real one she's a real one in the city according to atlanta magazine the 10.5 million dollar mansion is modeled in the style of an old european estate Discante, as it's called, is a stucco, steel, and limestone structure that boasts Versailles parquet in the dining room, a library with a secret passage to the living room, and a 19th century pool house from France. But their shopping spree didn't end with modest homes. Leffler and her husband have donated $3.2 million to political committees, 3% of which went to Democrats. One of their biggest spending sprees went to a super PAC supporting Willard Mitt Romney. The couple coughed up $750,000 in support of the senator from Utah. But just giving exorbitant amounts of money to candidates wouldn't be enough for Leffler. In 2019, she applied to incumbent Senator Johnny Isaacson, who resigned from the post, citing health reasons. Although Leffler wasn't Trump's first choice, he wanted Doug Collins. She was tapped by Georgia Governor Brian Kemp for the position, where she's been serving the American people ever since. It's unclear if they want to be served by her, considering she's now in a runoff election, but nonetheless, she is Georgia's first female senator in 98 years. That's so funny. Like, Georgia's first female senator in 98 years. Girl power, baby. That's why, that's why, like, neoliberal uh, capitalist identity politics is so dumb, by the way. This is the reason why it's dumb as fuck. Girl boss. Yeah, what, what, what stops you from saying that this is a girl boss? Like, what, is this girl power? Is what she did girl power, dude? I'm proud to announce that conservative businesswoman and political outsider, Kelly Leffler, will be Georgia's... These fucking demons, dude. She's a political outsider, dude. 
They're they're portraying her as an outsider, like Donald Trump is a political outsider. Bitch, what do you mean? They're literally inside. See, once you pay a profound amount of money to a super PAC, like you're an insider, you're not an outsider. Next U.S. Senator. CNBC notes, Leffler is by far the richest member of Congress, sharing a net worth of about 500. Now it's a billion. Now they're officially, I believe, Kelly Leffler, as of like this year, her and her husband, since that video have doubled their net worth. Yeah. Since that video came out. Since that fucking video came out, Kelly Loveler and her husband doubled their net worth and are now a billionaire, dude. $100 million, and boy would she use it. A novel coronavirus ignited an outbreak of a deadly disease called COVID-19 in China in December of 2019. The disease spread quickly with the first case in the US occurring the following month. By March of 2020, the COVID-19 outbreak was in its nascent stage, just beginning to take hold in the US. Then in early 2020, Leffler and her colleagues sat through some closed door meetings. Right after those meetings, Leffler sold a bunch of stocks, a whole bunch. Directly before the market took a nosedive, she sold in total stocks valued up to $18.7 million. That's $18.7 million. She dumped her retail stocks and bought shares in DuPont, which produces medical supplies. Instead of warning the American people after getting vital information, she offloaded millions in stocks and then publicly said this. The good news is the consumer is strong, the economy is strong, jobs are growing. Our president has done a fantastic job making sure that we're in the best position to manage through this situation. <coughs> However, Leffler claims the sales were completely out of her hands. She claims the transactions were carried out by her and her husband's financial advisor without their knowledge. You sold over a million dollars in stocks in your own personal portfolio before the market went down. Were you trading on inside information about what was coming? Well, I'm, I'm really glad you asked, Ed, because I do want to set fucking house is so big it's echoing do you guys remember when we watched this interview live her house is so large that she's literally she's not even in the living room this is like her interview room and it's echoing motherfucker Got the record straight i've seen some of those stories and it's absolutely false and it could not be true so if you actually look at the personal transaction reports that were filed it notices at the bottom that I'm only informed of my transactions after they occur several weeks. As Leffler cashed in while hundreds of thousands of Americans died, she launched a re-election bid. The race between Leffler and Democrat Raphael Warnock was so tight, it triggered an automatic runoff for January 2021. And the only reason why this fucking runoff occurred is because there was a spoiler on the Republican side. I just want to remind you guys that there was a third uh, there was a third candidate that also made a legitimate uh also had a legitimate run now obviously there were plenty of democratic uh candidates on that uh race as well but doug jones who uh donald trump originally wanted to uh, appoint to this seat if i'm not mistaken was was uh, uh the the other republican runner in that uh, in that race that secured i think 1.2 or doug collin not doug jones uh, uh it secured 1.2 million votes or something like here let's look at the actual tally yeah doug collins the republican got 980 980 thousand votes i did i thought she got he got like 2 million but i was wrong there wasn't even that many people voting but yeah like together the amount of votes they get uh way passes the the radical liberal Raphael warnock's percentage I still haven't finished this video. Meaning Holy the shit. Senate majority hangs in the balance of two races in Georgia, Leffler and Warnock and Republican David Perdue, who also sold off a bunch of stock after closed door briefings about the coronavirus, and Democrat John Ossoff. These two races will decide which party controls the Senate and gains the power to shape Joe Biden's agenda. Leffler has an uphill battle to her re-election. Early polls suggest Warnock has the edge. He also has most of the WNBA on his side including players from the team Leffler co-owns. Leffler and Purdue have since called for Georgia's Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger's resignation, citing, without evidence, failures in the election. It's unclear if they're referring to their own campaigns or to the democratic process. Whatever the case may be, control of the Senate hangs on two people 
who have shown they're willing to put their own bank accounts before the American people. Yep.